long time no video. So I'm just back from a few weeks in California, if you can tell by my magnificent tan. It managed to sneak its way through Factor 50. I managed to fit in San Francisco, downtown LA, Hollywood, San Diego, Long Beach, Venice Beach, Santa Monica and Sunset Beach. But I wish I'd done so much more. Oh, Disneyland. I was actually there at the same time as VidCon and Comic Con, but I didn't go to either which I will forever hate myself for. So I wanted to talk about what it was like being a Scottish girl in America and the cultural differences that I experienced during the couple of weeks I was away. First of all, I got to shoot a gun. I got to walk in with only my passport's ID, get shown how to work a gun for about two minutes, and then I was able to just go in and shoot a gun. It's just crazy that anyone can go in and do that. That's a killing machine. <laughs> but no, no, you've got your ID. You can shoot a gun. I trust you. What's that fire? It was the most fun I have ever had while sober. And I really do hate that we don't have shooting ranges here. Although I would be really skint, probably. Another thing that really stuck out was the amount of cat calling you got. I know it's weird being like whistled at or beeped by a car over here, it happens maybe about once a week or something. But in America you cannot literally leave the front door without some guy giving you a compliment and them thinking, yeah I've just made her day from that, when it's actually sleazy as fuck. It, the guys are shouting, hey white girl, where you going? And they're expecting you to answer. Like, you just have to learn to ignore it. Like, what probably annoyed me the most, but it's the most innocent thing, was when someone finds out you're Scottish and they feel the need to list everyone that they know that's Scottish and trace back all their roots to you. Oh, my wife's great-great-grandmother was from Scotland. Cool. Yeah, McDonald, the McDonald clan. Oh yeah, I know them well. They live next door to me. Probably the biggest conversation killer. Now what I loved the most about America was constantly feeling like you were in the middle of a film or a TV show. Wisteria Lane was definitely a highlight. I was just in awe for the five minutes that we drove round on the Universal tour. But the best was um, we were couch surfing. If you haven't heard of couch surfing, definitely look it up. It is a brilliant, brilliant idea. Well, we were couch surfing with this guy, Mike, and he lived across the road from one of the shops that they filmed Dexter in for season eight, episode one. And I was just so starstruck just being in this little shop, just knowing that Michael C. Hall walked on that exact ground. I mean, the most interesting thing I've had back home was standing at the bottom of an alley while they were shooting an episode of Taggart while my friend was whitey and her guts up from drinking too much. Now, to lower the tone a little bit, the most upsetting thing that I had to witness there was the homeless situation, especially in San Francisco. It was horrible there. Like, the minute we stepped out of the hotel in San Francisco, there was a man just across the road just screaming. He was just screaming nonsensical words and no one was paying attention. Like, he wasn't seeing anything in particular, but like, the fact that everyone's just learned to completely ignore it. And what was sad is, by the end of the three weeks I was in America, I'd kind of learned to ignore it as well. I mean, there's still the people that haven't completely lost their mind to drugs, and they'll tell you a joke or sing a song with you. I'll show you a clip of one of the guys that we met in San Francisco after a pub crawl. So I was slightly drunk and I was trying to encourage him to sing it again for the camera but he sang sitting on the dock of the bay to us and he was wearing a YouTube hoodie so it's just meant to be here. But I didn't realise that the way that they make out homeless people to be on The Simpsons or Family Guy is literally how it is. They walk around with there are little shopping trolleys full of their little bundles of junk that they love. There was one guy but who just pulled out a samurai sword and he was just practicing with that. Each to their own. 
There was another situation we had with a homeless man and he stepped out in front of my friend and he started screaming that this is his city and she's a woman, she should listen because he's a man and then after she answered back without realising what she was doing, um, he was like, I've got a gun and he pulled out this toy keyboard and just started playing notes on it. See if I'd seen that animated and it was in some kind of comedy situation, then that would be hilarious. But being in that real life situation, that was terrifying and really, really sad. Like he genuinely thought in his mind that his keyboard was a gun. I I don't know. No one really knows how it does work, but it's horrible that this is happening and no one really cares. And just another few things. Being woken up to sirens, you just kind of get used to it, I suppose, but it's so nice to be back home and just be able to sleep silently without being woken up by anything other than my mum and brother walking around the house. The cockroaches, that's horrible when you're walking back from a night out and you're just scared as shit, just trying to avoid all these little bugs in the ground. And then the dune bugs, we don't have dune bugs here, but they are terrifying, they're massive. I know they can't really harm you, but it's not nice to have one fly at you. What I was really gutted about was when we went to Disneyland, the size of the castle, it is a dinky little thing. Like, I've just been to Paris last year with my friends to go to that Disneyland, and the moment you walk around the corner and you see the big castle, you're like, oh, I belong here. But then I'd taken my friend for the first time to Disneyland, California, and she walks around the corner, I'm like, wait till you see the castle, it'll be really good, they always make it the main feature. You walk around and it's like the height of me. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm qu quite tall, but I'm not that tall actually. And the drinks measurements, oh my god. Back home with the drinks measurements, it's like that much vodka compared to that much coke. But oh no, in America they just free pour the vodka right up to the top and then just kind of top it off with a little bit of coke. So I completely understand why girls get completely fucked up on one drink over there because it's not actually, it's about 10 drinks over here. Now, despite any negatives that I have said, I did absolutely fall in love with the place. I got all the touristy things out of the way, so I really, really hope that I do get another opportunity to go back to actually live the experience and properly enjoy more time down by Venice Beach. I fell in love with Venice Beach. It was just so amazing. And next time I'll definitely go to Comic Con and VidCon. Did I not go? It was so stupid. Where was I? I miss cheap pop tarts. Sorry it took a while to get a video back up but I was away for a few weeks and I had to like the jet lag and shit.